So I'm gonna be quickly taking you through the process of 3D printing that I like to use. Everybody's different, all 3D printers are different, everybody does it different, but this is the process that I like to use. So I'm gonna be showing you how I use 3D printing in the office to convey my architectural concepts. So 3D printing is really useful in architecture now because we can quickly create massing models or show concepts of buildings that we're gonna design before they're actually built. The cool thing about doing this is I can do many iterations of my design. I can 3D print multiple iterations and I can sit and evaluate all those different design options and pick from the best one. So I'm not gonna be 3D printing a whole building, but if you wanna see a whole house 3D printed, I'm sure there's plenty of videos on that. So to get started, I'm gonna jump into Rhino, I'm gonna 3D model something, and you're gonna see the process of modeling it and then 3D printing it. So to get started, I'm in a program called Rhino, where I have free range to design anything I want with various shapes and forms. I don't usually use this program to design buildings or draw floor plans. I mainly use this to create more conceptual models or objects. But today we're gonna be making the YouTube like button, just to remind you to like this video. So to 3D print a solid object, I first need to create a solid object. I'm drawing simple lines right now that when connected together will create the shape that I need. Then I'll take these lines and extrude them to make my solid object. So you're probably thinking, extruded, solid object, what the heck are you talking about? Think about a food processing machine that takes product and pushes it through a form to create the shape of that food. These are chocolate bars, for example. Well, what I'm doing is I'm using the outline that I drew earlier to make a solid object that follows the form of that profile. But instead of pushing liquefied chocolate through that profile, I'm taking that line and stretching it out to make my object. Now this is a simplified process and not all 3D modeling is this fast and easy, but for the purposes of this video, I chose to make it this way. Once I have this, most of the work is done. I need to scale down my object to make sure it fits within the parameters of the 3D printer, which in my case happens to be about 11 inches by 6 inches by 6 inches tall. I can print anything within these boundaries, but if I want to make something bigger than this, then I need to break it up and print out separate pieces. The software shows exactly how the printer will build up one layer at a time. This is exactly how the printer works by laying down a single layer and then moving up to the next layer. So you see that hexagon pattern on the inside? That's called the infill. So I'm making a solid object, which means it won't have holes through it. But I don't want this thing to be completely solid all the way through, or else that would take a really long time and use up a lot of printing material. So to save space, the software automatically creates this infill pattern, so my solid object is really actually about 70% hollow on the inside. This will still give enough structural integrity so it doesn't break easily, but it'll save material and time like I mentioned before. But you'll see this process more clearly when the printer starts working. So the printer works by taking this spool of plastic filament that gets fed through this tube from the back of the printer. Then it inserts the plastic into the print head and comes out of this metal tip. The print head gets heated to about 230 degrees Celsius so that the plastic filament gets melted down. Now when the print head moves around, it's laying down a thin layer of melted plastic on the bed where it'll begin to build the object from the bottom up. There's a small fan on the side of the print head that helps cool down the melted plastic just enough to stay in place, but it stays warm enough to allow the next layer to melt on top of it. So once the printer finishes one layer, you can see that the bed moves down a little bit so it can start working on the next layer. It'll slowly start to build up layer by layer until the whole thing is done. Once it's done, all we need to do is take out the printer bed. Now begins the process of removing the object from the bed. It's stuck on there pretty good, so that way when it's moving around and printing the object, it stays put in one place. Just a little bit of cleanup here to remove some extra plastic that was used to help stick to the bed. And once that's gone, we have our final object. Give this a like and let me know what else you wanna see me 3D print. 